Assalamu alaikum ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. So in this video I'm going to help you set up MGY with docking as a sub-module with SDL2 uh, using Nugget package, uh, of course in Visual Studio, with Git pretty much, Git support in Visual Studio. So first of all you got to make sure to go to Visual Studio installer, right? Uh, of course, you got to have to have Visual Studio 2022 or whatever. And then you got to make sure to go to Modify and make sure you have the Git, um, the Git thing, right? So if you look for Git, uh, so for me, I also want GitHub Copilot, but there you go. So make sure you have Git for Windows or otherwise or the equivalent, you know, and of course, C++ uh, support there. Other than that, let's actually go into Visual Studio now. Visual Studio 2022. And let's create a new project. Now I'm just gonna go with a console app. You could go with whatever you want, I think. And let's actually go and say next and create. Okay. All right, so now we have a new project, perfect. So the first thing that we're gonna need is to install uh, or like to get a, you know, uh, MGY as a submodule. So here's how we're going to do it. Well, before that, actually, we have to set up Git into this project. So we're going to go to uh, Git here, and we're going to create a Git repository like this. And in my, I mean, you could go ahead and launch it or create it as a new GitHub repository, like remotely. But for me, for now, I'm just going to go with local only. So it would only be created in my own computer. You can add a readme, you can add a license if you want for your own project and make sure to add gitignore template as C++. So let's create this GitHub repo or like this git thing, right? Cool. Now you're going to come here and you're going to get a command prompt, okay? And now hopefully you can say git submodule add dash b docking so basically b stands for branch so the git branch uh, because we're going to use that branch if you don't want to use the git branch then you could say master or whatever other branch okay so i'm going to go look for mgy here um, there you go and i'm going to copy the link here there you go i'm just going to paste it uh, there you go Control v and enter and so you're gonna wait until it does its job. So as you can see here, master, and you can see that there is a docking branch here. There's also some other features if you wanna check that out pretty much. So that's that's cool. Okay, so let's wait for this to, okay, there you go. Now we should have, if we say LS or well, there in Windows, uh, you, you can see that we have MGY here. So that's perfect. Now let's actually set up the other stuff. So let's add um, SDL. So for SDL, I'm not gonna bother. I'm just gonna go to, well, where is it? Manage Nugget Packages. There you go. And gonna look for SDL pretty much. Well, uh, you gotta go to Browse and SDL. And you can get this SDL2 Nugget. And of course, it's the latest stable version. So we're gonna install it and we're gonna apply. And now you have both SDL and MGY installed. Uh, so M like MGY doesn't really have a library. You just include the source files in your project pretty much. Uh, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna say add into source files and we're gonna say existing items. Okay, and we're gonna go to MGY right and you have to include all the cpp files okay so all the source files so cpp 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 oh, all of them that are in the root directory okay so yeah you don't need the header files uh though so yeah let's actually add these i believe and we also got to add the include files so we're going to go to here and we're going to go to properties and by the way i prefer the latest uh, release of C++. I'm a modern guy, so let's go with that. And then, I mean, why not even C language standard? <laughs> Anyways, I, let's see, hold on. Um, okay, so let's go to C++, VC++ directories, right? And we're going to go to include directories here. We're going to edit. 
and we're gonna come here to the root and we're gonna go to the MGY where we cloned uh, MGY as a submodule and we're gonna go to yeah here pretty much and we're gonna select the folder uh, we're also gonna need to add another include directory where like basically we're telling Visual Studio where to find our include files so there is backends uh, we need this one too so we're gonna select that folder and finally we also need a, C a CPP though this is an optional one okay so uh, you gotta go to where is it uh, mm. I don't know, MISC, I think, yeah, MISC and CPP, there you go. There's also some other stuff, but I'm not going to cover it in this tutorial at least, okay? There you go, and now you should be done with the include directories, hopefully, if I didn't forget anything. And yeah, that's that's perfect. Uh, you could also change the warning level if you want and all other cool stuff. But yeah, so this should be fine for now. Now, what are we going to do? We're going to go to... Uh, you know, like the docking branch, just in case. And we're going to go to examples, right? And so here, I mean, you could basically use MGY with a lot of uh, backends. Uh, but in my case, I'm going to use it with SDL2. So I'm going to go with example SDL2. And we're going to use the SDL renderer too. So yeah, uh, okay. And let's go to main.cpp and let's actually copy this whole code. And we can start this as a, you know, like an example for more like a bed for our application. So to build up on it, basically. Uh, but other than that, we also need some other files, of course. Uh, so like if you actually run right now, uh, it's not going to work. There you go. So it's going to say in resolved external symbol because we haven't added the backend, right? So depending on which backend you have chosen, you're going to come to source files, right? And you're going to add an um, existing item. And you're going to come back again to MGY and you're going to go to backends, right? And you're going to add the backends that you use. So in our, my case, I want to use SDL2 as my windowing library or a windowing backend. And I want to use the SDL2 renderer as my, you know, graphics API. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come to, well, first of all, I got to look for SDL2 implementation, right? So SDL2, uh, where is it? There you go. So the CPP file, of course, and the SDL2 render.cpp, right? There you go. Now we're going to add these. And now it should hopefully fix it if I didn't miss anything. And there you go. Now you got it working. Perfect. There you go. It's that simple. Um, now, the other thing that you can also do, uh, this is, of course, optional, is uh, you're not going to need it in this simple case, but you may need it for C++ uh, later on you know, on your project. So you can add existing item. And you're going to go back to MGY once again, and you're going to go to MISC, right, and CPP. And you're going to add this MGYSTDLib.CPP. Of course, if you're going to, if you want to use like the uh, C++ STD strings, you know, if you're not using them, then you don't need to include this, right? So let's add this. And there you go. Now, just to keep this, you know, uh, organized, we can basically make a new filter here, uh, like add a new filter. And let's call this, I guess, libs, all right? And then we could add another filter once again, and we could call this MGY. Uh, there you go. And then we could basically grab this whole, all this stuff other than our console application CP file and add them to the MGY to keep things a little bit organized. Of course, this is not needed, right? So here is some warnings that ReSharper is actually telling me. So you could replace with uh, stdi.h with cstdio. And what else? Let's see. Printf. Instead of printf, you could use a CD print line as long as you're using the latest version of C++. You could use this. Error. It's like Rust. So you just do this. And another thing is that you have to use static cast, you know, just best C++ practices. And you could use auto here. There you go. And what else? Uh, yeah, it's probably need to be const expert or const. Yeah, there you go. So it can be const expert, this one. Um, this one can be, oops, uh, what is going on here? Uh, what? There you go. Okay. I don't know why that 
anyways never mind so the other thing that is this one is actually required you know so if you're gonna be using the docking support then you have to make sure to add there you go you have to make sure to add mgy config flags docking docking enable there's also some other options that you could check out on your own from the documentation of mgy so like if you go to actually actually if you go to here right so in fact, all the stuff that I've shown you until now is like from the documentation from my experience pretty much. So if you go to, where is it? Uh, yeah, usage, I think. Uh, and getting started, I believe. There you go, okay. So here you can find, you know, uh, you could probably find the link in the description below. And you could go through this whole wiki. So like they have a whole wiki of stuff that you could check out basically. So that's perfect. So here's what we're doing basically. In fact, we don't even need a CDIO seems like and yeah there you go so here we're just initializing sdl pretty much if it fails of course we just return minus one from the main function and then you know we print the error here just some native ime stuff for phones and stuff like that but anyways here we create window with sdl render graphics context pretty simple Here's the width and the height, of course. And yeah, there you go. So what else? We create here the SDL renderer with present vsync. If you don't want vsync, then you have to remove this flag. Render accelerated, so we make sure that it uses the GPU, hopefully. So here, we just check the MGY version. We create an MGY context. We get the IO, input output, basically. Then we configure the IO, IO.config flags. Uh, this is usually being used when you don't use some variable like io here but we're actually using it so i think that's probably just left out from some old code here is the style if you want the light theme that you probably want to do this instead of this right and here we just set up the platform to render backend so here we init for sdl renderer we give it the window and the renderer of course it probably supports multiple windows and multiple renders too so that's cool and here we initialize the backend right so you could also load fonts i'm not going to go through that right now uh, but there you go you could here it's basically shown like basically this example when you actually run it it just shows you a demo window where you could like basically work like um manage this stuff right here right just just try the the thing and see how it goes basically and if you want the docking if you're trying to uh trying to the dock stuff um you could go to dock space here example dock space and now you have a docking space right so you could actually dock stuff wherever you want and everything is pretty cool so let's say for example we want also the property editor we could put it here uh, let's say some the custom rendering of course works because we use the SDL2 renderer uh, and there you go everything is perfect uh, let's go man there you go perfect so yeah I mean you could just uh, check out that yourself other than that here we're actually we have the main loop for application we have SDL event, like we're basically pulling events that are available in this frame. Though instead of this in modern C++, you could, well, I mean, in any C++ actually, I find it, you know, more hygienic <laughs> code wise, if you do it like this, but that just preference, honestly. Um, but other than that, here you could also use a switch statement instead of this. So, but anyways, so like you could, yeah, I'd rather just, Go with a switch statement, you know, go with event.type here, and then just say SDL quit um, case SDL quit, right? And yeah, done equal true break. And there you go. But of course, this is just reference, it doesn't really change much, right? So yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think, well, it's not the exact same thing though. Let me see. Uh, yeah, hold on. So case, oh, yeah, SDL case, SDL window event. And if window event, SDL event close. Yeah, that's actually good to go, yeah. It's checking like the window ID. So like if you have multiple windows, then well, of course you're still gonna have one, you know, event loop. So you gotta check which window 
uh, it's talking like the event is coming from using the window ID of the window, right? And you could get a window ID using this function. Um, so that's cool, done equal to true. So we could basically exit the main loop because here we have while not done. But other than that, you're all good. Uh, let's see, did I miss something? Uh, case label may only be used within a switch. Ah, I see. So, uh, yeah, I missed to close the switch here, I guess. Hold on. What is going on here? Uh, hmm. Oh, yeah, I see. So, I missed that. <laughs> There you go, perfect. And yeah, that's that's it. Now we start the dear MGY frame. So we make new, of course, MGY is in like, it's uh, immediate mode GY, you know, it's not retained mode, uh, which means that it would basically render the whole thing from scratch every frame, um, but it should, be, it should be fine most of the time. So if show demo window, of course, if you don't want to show the demo window and you want to actually make your application, you have to remove this code, right? So you don't want to use this, uh, but there you go. You could also show a simple window that creates ourselves. We use a begin and pair to create a named window. There you go. So MGY begin, hello world and MGY end. Uh, but yeah, so here it's pretty simple. You want to add some text. There you go. You want to add a checkbox. Pretty simple. And of course, the state is retained through variables like this. Here, though, we could actually use um, a, a interpret cast because basically this color edit three function is getting a float uh, array of three uh, values, right? So. Here we have an actual MVEC4, so we have to cast it right into a float array. And this should be fine because MVEC4, you know, have the same underlying uh, back, like back memory, but whatever. If MGY button, button, there you go. So this is how you do buttons. So if this button have been clicked, this, this condition would be true, so we can we say counter plus plus. So the state is tracked through the variable. And here MGY, same line. So this basically call between widgets or groups to lie at them horizontally, exposition given in window coordinates. And here we have some text. There you go. So this is like C style uh, formatting in C, right? And there you go, cool stuff. Here, if you want to show another window, another simple window, there you go. But yeah, pretty simple stuff. And finally, we actually render the MGY, GY. <laughs> and then we could also set the scale, draw a color. Here again, we could actually use the static cast, uh, just like this. There you go. And then we're under clear, render draw data. This is actually using a, a new, well, it's not new, but like newer function called render geometry, I think in SDL. Uh, so you gotta make sure to have the, uh, like at least 2.0.17. This is why there is this macro right here. So there you go. Um, but yeah, so here we get the draw data and then we pass it to the backend. Then we just say to SDL to render, present uh, for the render. And then finally we clean up, shut down, shut down, destroy context, destroy render, destroy window and SDL quit. Though honestly, you don't even need all of this. Like you could, you could probably be fine just using SDL quit, but yeah, it's good. It's good practice, I guess, to clean up, to always clean up. But anyways, so yeah, that was it guys for this video. I hope you liked it. If you want to see more videos like this, please like this video and subscribe. So I know uh, that you guys like this kind of content and so I can do more. So see you later. Goodbye everyone.